So in the previous video, which which has the stuff up here, we looked at one-sided. Are we up here? One-sided local extrema, one-sided local maximum, and what did I see about the sign of the one-sided derivative if that one-sided derivative exists? In this video, I'm going to look at two-sided local maximum and figure out what that tells us about the sign of the two-sided derivative if that two-sided derivative exists. Okay. Uh, now, a couple of remarks. So, first of all, what, what's our strategy going to be, roughly? We'll look at two-sided local max. By the way, what does two-sided local max mean? So, local max at a point means that local max at a point C means f of x is less than or equal to f of C for x to the immediate left and the immediate right of C. Okay? So, it's defined on both left and right and the value on the left and right are both less than or equal to and uh, local min would mean that f of x is greater than or equal to f of c for x to the immediate left and the immediate right. That's what the two side comes in. So, what's our strategy going to be to figure out the sign of the derivative? What do you think we'll be doing? Hmm? To figure out the sign of the derivative. Yeah, where? Or figure out what the derivative should be. Like, what's our strategy going to be? Well, I want to see if it is a max on me and I see Yeah, well, let, let's say you have max. Mm -hmm. Then what will you say? Well, you'll say it's the two-sided local max. So therefore, it's a local max on the left and the right. Uh -huh. Then figure out the behavior of the one-sided derivatives. Then use that to deduce something about the two-sided derivatives. Okay. And what do you think our conclusion is going to be about the derivative for a two-sided local max? Hmm? It is from the left. If it is from the left, so you just read it on. Well, just tell me your, your final conclusion first, and then we'll go through the reasoning. You you asking at the exact point? Yeah, at the point. That will be zero. The derivative will be zero if it is the local max. No, the derivative will be zero if it exists. If it exists, that's what we are going to be aiming for. Okay, now let's go to the explanation. So, local max. What's your explanation? Because from the left is greater than. Yeah, so if it's a two sided zero. local max, it's a local max on the left. Mm -hmm. So, so the left hand derivative is greater than or equal to zero if it exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also, it is a. It is a local max from the right. So the right hand derivative is. Less than or equal to zero. If it exists. Mm -hmm. Now, what can you say if the derivative exists? Then, what does that mean? Both the left-hand derivative and the right-hand derivative exist, mm -hmm. and they are equal. equal. So, what does that tell you? You have a number which is greater than or equal to zero, and less than or equal to zero, and another number which is uh, less than or equal to zero, and they are equal. So, under what condition can that happen? Zero, if they're both zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, get that the derivative is equal to zero if it exists. Okay, what about local min? What can you say about local min? Well, you be have, zero if it, if yeah, it exists. Yeah, that's a conclusion. How do you get that? Well, if it's a two-sided local min, it's a local min from the left. So the left-hand derivative will less than or equal to zero if it exists. Local min from the right. So the right-hand derivative will be greater than or equal to zero if it exists. If the derivative exists, then? It equals zero. Yeah, why? Because if the derivative exists, then both the left-hand derivative and the right-hand derivative have to exist. And they must equal. And so it's a number which is less than or equal to zero. It has to equal a number which is greater than or equal to zero. And so the derivative is has zero. to equal zero. Okay, philosophically, why did we get the derivative equal zero? Why did we have opposite signs from the left and the right? If you go back and watch that video where we discussed this, the main reason is that when you're approaching from the left, then the denominator is less than zero for this difference quotient whose limit gives you the derivative. And when you're approaching from the right, the denominator is greater than zero. And that's why, that's why for the same local max, you get different conclusions about the left-hand derivative and the right-hand derivative. And it's that fact that the conclusions are different in the two cases that actually 
uh, helps you conclude that the derivative, two-sided derivative, if it exists, has to equal zero. So let me define something and then say this another way. So a point C in the interior of the domain of a function f f is called a critical point if what if the derivative at that point equals zero or doesn't exist. Okay. Are we here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what can you say about the relation between local max min points and critical points? Local max min must be critical point. A point of local max min mm -hmm. must be a critical point. Why? Well, we said for a point of local max or min, the derivative if it exists, has to be zero. Okay, so another way of saying that is that the derivative either exists or, oh sorry, either is zero or it doesn't exist. Okay, so that's another way of putting it. So by the way, the derivative not existing, how could that happen? Well, it could happen in sort of two ways. One is that, that the left-hand derivative doesn't exist or the right-hand derivative doesn't exist. So, so it could happen because one of these one-sided derivatives doesn't exist. But it could also happen because the, the two one-sided derivatives exist but are not equal. Okay? So, so it could happen either way. And so critical point really there's sort of three types of case. One is where the derivative is zero. The other is where the derivative doesn't exist because the one-sided derivatives don't match. And the third is where the derivative doesn't exist because one of the one-sided derivatives doesn't exist. So your critical point could be any of those types. Okay? Is the other direction? True? Have you shown the other direction? No. No, the other direction is not even true. So this is is a, is not true. Okay. Now I want to say something more, and that's about strictness. So by the way, uh, you may have seen the strict here. That was optional. So even if it's not strict, you still have greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero here. So our conclusions didn't depend on strictness. But let's try to think what happens if we put strict here. Do we, can we still get either of these cases or do we now have to eliminate the derivative equal to zero case? We can still get those cases. You can still get the derivative equal to zero? Why? Well, it, isn't it that if you have a local max on the left, the left-hand derivative should be strictly positive? No. No? Even if you have a local max on the left, the left-hand derivative can, can be zero? It can be zero. It, it could be zero. Mm -hmm. And the right-hand derivative could be zero. So even if you have strict, the derivative could still be equal to zero. Okay, let's make uh, let's uh, look at some pictures. So, let's look at some pictures. So, suppose you have. Uh, you have a point here and you want a local max. Well, one kind of local max you could have is where, where it's sort of the positive derivative on the left and a negative derivative on the right. So it's this kind of picture. Right? So it's taking, it's turning. The derivative is not defined because it's turning. Okay, but you could also have another kind of local max where it sort of turns smoothly. 
So in that case, the derivative is zero, right? So the derivative could be undefined because it's turning sharply from positive to negative. The derivative could be zero, it's turning smoothly. And similarly for local min, you could have this kind of sharp turn, or you could have a smooth turn. Okay, and critical point definition covers both cases, and and that's why you have both these cases. Okay.